Here are the seven dark side effects of spiritual awakening that probably no one tells you about. You become boring. Waking up spiritually can feel like you're stepping into a different world, and sometimes people around you might not understand that new world. They'll say you've become boring. They miss the old. You the one who'd never miss a party, the one who loved to let loose and get wild, now you'd rather sit under a tree and meditate or dive deep into books that unlock life's mysteries. Sure, you still try to fit into the old molds, go out and have a drink, but it just doesn't feel right anymore. The conversations that used to make you laugh now seem shallow. The places that used to be your favorite hangouts now feel like they're squeezing the life out of you. It's like trying to wear an outfit from your childhood. It just doesn't fit. So what happened to that outgoing, always ready for fun? Person you once were, to put it simply. You're evolving. You're listening to a deeper part of yourself, a part that is hungry for meaning, for connection, for something more than just surface-level fun. This change might feel like a loss at first, but it's actually a sign of growth. Your soul is nudging you towards what truly fulfills you, not just what entertains you. Now, does this mean you're boring? Well, that depends on how you look at it. If, if exciting means always looking for the next big thrill, then sure, you might seem less exciting to some. But ask yourself, this isn't there something incredibly exciting about discovering who you truly are, about connecting with the world and people on a deeper level, about finding a sense of peace that no night out could ever give you? The truth is what's boring for some is deeply meaningful for others. The friends who say you've changed might not understand your journey right now, and that's okay. We're all on different paths, and sometimes those paths diverge. You might even find new friends, ones who resonate with your newfound interests and who won't find your discussions about spiritual awakening or self-improvement boring. You haven't lost yourself. You're just uncovering another layer of who you are. Think of it as shedding an old skin to reveal a more authentic you. You have every right to honor this new version of yourself, even if others don't get it. You doubt yourself even more. This is the roller coaster of spiritual awakening one moment. You're on top of the world feeling like you've cracked the code of life. You've met amazing people who get you who are on the same path and it's exhilarating. But then comes the dip, the self-doubt that Cree creeps in and shakes you to your core. Questions start bombarding you. Who am I really? What's my purpose? Why am I here? These are heavy questions, my friend, and they can make you doubt all the progress you've made in those moments. You might even consider going back to your old ways, just for the comfort of what's familiar. But when you try, you find out something shocking. You don't fit there anymore. Yet you also feel like you haven't fully settled into this new version of yourself either. It's like standing between two worlds belonging fully to neither. Here's what you need to know. Doubt isn't your enemy. It shows you're taking this seriously and that you're grappling with life's big questions. Doubt urges you to dig deeper. Question more and explore further without it. How would you ever, ever grow? How would you ever discover what truly resonates with you? Doubt can feel like a heavy burden, but it's also a tool that hones your understanding and molds your character. You might doubt the progress you've made, but don't forget. Progress isn't always linear. It's often two steps forward, one step back, and that's perfectly okay. Each step back is a moment to reflect, recalibrate, and come back stronger. So if you're doubting everything again, welcome it as part of the journey. Take it as an opportunity to examine your beliefs, refine your path, and learn more about yourself. Talk to your spiritual friends about it, read books that challenge and inspire you, or seek guidance from mentors, but whatever. You do don't use doubt as an excuse to quit or to settle for a version of yourself that no longer serves you. Now you might be thinking, if awakening is about finding peace and understanding, why is it making me so uncertain? Because true wisdom isn't about having all the answers. It's about asking the right questions. And trust me, you're asking some of the most important questions anyone can ever ask. You're on this journey for a reason. Don't let doubt derail you. Instead, let it deepen you. Let it make you more compassionate, more humble, and more open to life's endless possibilities. You're not just growing, 
your becoming. And in this becoming, you'll find not just answers, but also a deeper, more meaningful connection with yourself and the world around you. Get confused about real spirituality. What is spirituality? Really, you ask yourself, is it about believing in God, diving into Buddhist teachings, or maybe becoming a dedicated yogi? You start collecting experiences and items, perhaps a deck of tarot cards, some crystals, or a bundle of sage you listen to. To philosophers like Alan Watts, consider living like a monk or get fascinated by Taism. But the more you explore, the more you can feel like you're sinking in a sea of confusion. It's like you're at an endless buffet of spiritual teachings and practices, and you're trying to find the one dish that will truly satisfy your hunger. Except the more you taste, the more confused you become about what you're really hungry for. You might even start wondering, is all this real, or are we just making things up to feel better? Here's some comfort. Confusion is a natural part of the journey, just like doubt. Confusion is not your enemy. It's your companion. It's proof that you're engaging deeply with the big questions and that you're not taking anything at face value. Confusion means you're challenging your assumptions, pushing boundaries, and stepping outside your comfort zone. And yes, that can be disorienting, but it's also where real growth happens. Spirituality isn't a one-size-fits-all experience. It's deeply personal. What resonates with one person might not resonate with another. That's okay. The beauty of spirituality is its diversity, the endless ways in which humans connect to something greater than themselves. Your path doesn't have to look like anyone else's and just because it's filled with questions and confusion doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. It means you're doing it sincerely. So next time you feel confused, take a deep breath. Remind yourself that this is part of the process. Every question Every doubt and every moment of confusion is a step on your unique spiritual journey. It's all shaping you, refining you, and preparing you for the next phase of your awakening. You lose friends. One of the most bittersweet aspects is realizing that not everyone you started with will continue with you on this. Path friendships that once seemed unbreakable may start to wane conversations that used to be fulfilling, now feel shallow. You find yourself craving depth wisdom and authenticity while some of your friends still get caught up in gossip social status or material success. It can feel like you're speaking different languages, you've started to question societal norms and seek meaning beyond the material world. While they're still playing by the old rule book, they might even start seeing your spiritual pursuits as woo-woo stuff, dismissing it as a phase you're going through, and that can hurt especially when these are people you've shared so much of your life with. But here's the silver lining growth often involves outgrowing certain aspects of your life to make room for the new you don't wear the same size shoes. Your entire life. Do you similarly as you grow spiritually? You may need different kinds of support, companionship, and conversation, and that's perfectly okay. Saying goodbye or distancing yourself from lifelong friends doesn't mean you failed or that those friendships weren't meaningful. It means you're honoring your own growth. And that's a brave thing to do. Remember, every relationship serves a purpose. Some are meant to last a lifetime. While others serve as stepping stones or lessons, it's okay to cherish the memories and move on. You think you have arrived. The exhilarating feeling that you've arrived can be a spiritual pitfall in itself. The moment you think you figured it all out is the moment you risk closing yourself off to further growth. The focus on transcendental experiences visions, or stepping into a higher. Dimension can give you the illusion that you've crossed some imaginary finish line. You might think I've awakened. I've seen the 5D. I've attained enlightenment. I'm done. But the truth is, spiritual growth is a never-ending journey. Believing that you've arrived can be a form of spiritual. Bypassing a way to sidestep deep-seated issues or avoid doing the hard work. You start to use your newfound spirituality as a shield, a Way to deflect from confronting your darker aspects or unresolved matters, but true spirituality is about facing these things head and not skirting around them. How enlightened are you if you haven't yet realized that enlightenment was within you all along? That you don't need extraordinary visions or out-of-body experiences to validate your growth? These can be valuable. Milestones, yes, but they are not the 
Destination don't get stuck at the overlook. Continue hiking up the spiritual mountain. The real work starts the moment you think you're done. It involves continuous self-exploration and confronting your shadows, those hidden uncomfortable aspects of yourself that you'd rather not deal with, but which hold keys to your deeper understanding. It means consistently applying your spiritual insights into your daily life, staying aligned with your principles, even when it's difficult and continually aiming for inner balance, there will always be more layers to peel more depths, to explore more lessons to learn. The moment you think you know it all, you set a limit on your own potential. Keep that humility and openness that sparked your spiritual journey in the first place. Be a perpetual student of life, keen to learn, eager to grow, and Willing to adapt every day presents a new opportunity to learn to grow and to become a better version of yourself, and that's the true beauty of spirituality. It offers endless avenues for expansion, pushing you to explore realms you never even knew existed. You wish you never entered this stage in your life. Sometimes the more we know, the more we wish we didn't. Before we go any further, let's take a moment to breathe. Inhale deeply. Exhale completely. Feel your feet on the ground. You're here in this moment, and you've got the full power to shape your next one. The feelings of regret or disillusionment are real and they are valid. You may ask, why did I walk down this path filled with false prophets, confusing messages, losing friends and family and loneliness? This might sound strange, but congratulations are in order why. Because you're asking questions. And questioning is the lifeblood of true spiritual growth. The real point of a spiritual awakening isn't to provide you with easy answers. It's to disrupt your status quo and provoke you to ask deeper, more uncomfortable questions. It shakes you, makes you doubt, brings you to tears. And yes, sometimes it even makes you want to turn back, you might. Wish you could return to the simpler times. But were they genuinely fulfilling? Or were they just comfortable? There's a difference. The life you left behind might have been easier. But the path you're on now has the potential to lead to a life that's genuinely worth living. A life filled with purpose, depth, and connection. Feeling lost or regretful doesn't make you unspiritual. It makes you human, even the most. Revered spiritual leaders faced periods of doubt and disillusionment. These are the moments that test your mettle, urging you to dig deeper into your spiritual toolkit. There's a saying that goes, the only way out is through. That's especially true in the context of a spiritual awakening, a sense of entitlement after a powerful spiritual awakening. It's easy to feel like you're special or better than others. It's like discovering a hidden treasure inside you. And you can't help but think, wow, I've got something others don't. You might start thinking you're here to lead or guide people, maybe even save them. You believe you're helping by pushing them towards their own awakening, their own moment of clarity. But here's the thing, thing. You can't rush someone else's journey. No matter how much you care for them, what can you do? Instead, should you keep all this wonderful wisdom locked up inside you, not necessarily, but instead of throwing it at people, try to understand where they're coming from. Think of your interactions like making a nice meal. Compassion should be your main ingredient. Just a pinch of wisdom will do. If someone is ready and open, they'll ask for more compassion and love. Have a way of opening doors. When you approach people with genuine care and understanding, they're more likely to listen. You're not forcing wisdom down their throats. You're offering them a safe space. And sometimes that's all people really need to start figuring things out for themselves. Until then, focus on being a source of love and compassion. Let your actions speak. Let your presence be felt, but don't force your wisdom onto others. Because at the end of the day, it's not your wisdom that people will remember. It's how you made them feel. That's the real gift you can give to the world. But let's not forget the good things about a spiritual awakening. You become your own source of peace. And it's a peace that doesn't rely on external conditions. It's a peace born from understanding, from having faced confusion and doubt and having emerged on the other side stronger and wiser. You're no longer looking for others to complete you or validate you. You're complete. And your validation comes from a much more reliable source yourself. 
let's talk about happiness. The pursuit of happiness is often what starts us on our spiritual journey, but what we find is so much richer than the happiness we initially sought, we find joy. Happiness is often fleeting and dependent on circumstances, while joy is a deep abiding state that persists regardless of what's happening around you. Joy comes from a deep connection with your true self, a connection that a spiritual awakening nurtures your newfound sense of self, might even drive you to change your career or life direction entirely. Suddenly, the money, the prestige, or the security that seemed so crucial before faded in importance. Your desire to make a difference and live a life that is about more than just your comfort, comfort and success now drives you. And let's not overlook the most beautiful aspect, your ability to connect with others in seeing the divine in yourself. You begin to see it in everyone else too, empathy and compassion. Don't just become words or ideals. They become your natural states of being you. Understand that everyone is fighting their own battles. Often battles you know nothing about instead of judgment. You offer understanding instead of indifference. You offer love as you grow. You lift others up with you. Sometimes in ways you're not even aware of your energy, your wisdom, and your love become gifts, not just to yourself, but to the world around you. You become a source of light in a world that so desperately needs it. So yes, spiritual awakening is a complex, multi-layer journey filled with both thorns and roses. But remember, it's the thorns that protect the rose, giving it the space and safety it needs to bloom. If you're still here, I would like to say thank you for tuning in until the end. I hope I have not wasted your time. If you love what I'm doing, please share it with your friends and family who might need this message and comment on your experience so others can learn from you too. I wish you a beautiful day.